Gunsmoke. Brought to you by Chesterfield. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because it's more perfectly packed thanks to Accuray. They satisfy the most. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad, the transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. <laughs> the marshal's office? Uh, yeah, come in, stranger. You're Marshal Dillon? I am. My name's Egan Marshal, Emmett Egan. I'm glad to know you. Uh, it's Chester Proudfoot. How do you do? Oh. The purpose of my visit may surprise you, Marshal. <laughs> well, if it doesn't mean trouble, it sure will. I've just deposited $50,000 in the bank here. Huh? That's a lot of money, Egan. Well, it's taken me ever since the war to earn it. I've been up in Chicago, Marshal, running cattle auctions for a man named Swift, but I'm through with that now. No? I want to try something new. Marshal, I don't intend any insult, but if you need money, name your price. I'm afraid I don't follow you, Egan. I want your job. What? I want to be Marshal here. All right, say it out, Egan. I'm serious, Marshal. No tricks to this. I've been to Washington, and the War Department's endorsed my application, but they tell me there are no openings, so I came to Dodge. I thought if I can somehow persuade you to quit, maybe they'll put me on here. I think you are serious. Oh, I am. It's simple enough. I'm tired of the kind of work I was doing, and I want to try this, something exciting. Oh, I see. What would you advise me to do, Marshal? Go back to Chicago. You're a lot safer there. You think I'm not qualified to be a lawman? Well, you're wearing a gun. Well, I'm accustomed to authority, Marshal. I was a major under General McClellan. Took my first bullet in the Chickahominy in 62. I see. Uh, is this your first trip to the frontier, Mr. Egan? It's my first since 67. Uh-huh. Well, I still advise you to go back to Chicago. No, Marshal. All right, Mr. Egan, you want this job so bad, you can have it, as far as I'm concerned. Now, Mr. Dillon... There's I... very little money in it, and absolutely no thanks. I've been a live target for every drunken bum and glory hunter in Kansas about long enough. You mean it, Marshal? Yeah. But on one condition. Yeah? That you hang around for a week, see what it's like. And then, if you still want it... Oh, I'll want it all right. All right, then we'll start right now. I'm ready... What do we do first? You all set, Chester? My. Yes, sir, I guess so. All right, then follow me. That whistling man, Bobby Haggard, really started something. Tonight, the Calypso boys join in. Ready, amigos? Pat 
packs more pleasure, packs more pleasure. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. The more perfectly packed your cigarette, the more taste and mildness are released for you. Chesterfield, made by exclusive Accuray, has an open, easy draw that unlocks all the pleasure of fine tobaccos. Now, Accuray ensures an even distribution of tobacco from one end of your Chesterfield to the other. Chesterfield is firm and pleasing to the lips, mild yet deeply satisfying. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. To the touch, to the taste, Chesterfield packs more pleasure because it's more perfectly packed. Why, Chesterfield, mild yet they satisfy the most. Why don't you sit down and rest a spell, Mr. Egan? No, thanks. You're going to wear yourself out walking up and down that way. Yeah. You got a match, sister. Mm-hmm. Here, Red. Here. No, oh, thanks. <laughs> this dog sure ain't very lively today, is it? No, not very. If I only had me a knife, I could do a little whittling. Now, oh, what happened to your knife, Chester? Well, it was about wore out, so I traded it to a small kid I know. Her <laughs> flipper. <laughs> Why don't you get yourself another one? Mr. Dillon, I am so mean poor, I just couldn't stand the outlay of oh, my knife. Oh, yeah, yeah, I forgot. Hey, look there. Somebody hadn't ought to be in town. Oh, where? Who? That fella coming up the street, riding that sleigh back to old broodmare, see him? He looks like a farmer. <laughs> if you call a man whose wife holds a ten-yard patch of mealy potatoes a farmer, then he's one, all right. You said he shouldn't be in town. He can't be very dangerous. He's dangerous to himself. Oh, what do you mean? Why, he gets a doggone drunk every time he comes in here. He can't hardly climb back up on that old mare. And when he does, he usually falls off somewhere before he gets home and lays out there on the prairie all night like a dead man. It's a pure wonder he ain't been at by something. Oh... Marshal, we've been hanging around this porch for three hours. I'm beginning to feel like a bum myself. Now, that's part of the job, Egan. Keeping an eye on things, we call it. Keeping an eye on things? You and Chester both are fighting to stay awake. Are you calling it quits, Egan? Oh, no. Of course not. Well, then let's go get a cup of coffee, huh? It'll be dark soon, and we can start making the rounds. <laughs> What's the name of this place, Marshal? It's called the Long Branch. Oh, here comes somebody you ought to know. Evening, ma'am. Oh, Kitty. How long have you been sitting here? Ah, uh, not long. Uh, Kitty, this is Emmett Egan. How do you do, Miss Kitty? Mr. Egan? Oh, I sit down. Uh-huh. I, uh, I hear you may be our new Marshal. What? Now, how in the world... Well, Chester was in a while ago. It's true, isn't it? Well, it isn't exactly as settled yet, Miss Kitty. But you want the job. Yes. Why? Well, let's say I was bored with what I was doing. Well, sure. That's happened to a lot of ex-soldiers. I can't stand peacetime. Uh, me in particular, I guess. Why don't you re-enlist? The cavalry keeps busy out here. I tried that, Miss Kitty. You did? Back in 67. 67? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. The Cheyenne and the Sioux were real active that year, weren't they? Yes, they were, but not where the cavalry was. Wait a minute. Uh, were you a General Hancock? That's right, Marshal. We took to the field for four months. We marched and countermarched all over this country, and then we returned to Fort Harker. Well, what was wrong with that? Well, all we did was burn one empty village, kill two young Cheyenne braves, both of whom we later found out were friendly. It took 1,100 men to do that. Oh. Mr. Dillon, 
Yeah, what is it, Chester? I, I don't know for sure, but I hear there's some kind of trouble down at Moss Grimmick State. Well, huh? it's about time something happened around here. Yeah. Now, don't forget, Egan. When it does, somebody usually dies. What's the trouble here, men? Where's Moss Grimmick, Chester? Well, he ain't here, Mr. Dillon. They say Leonard Fibbs there is the one who knows about it. Oh, Fibbs, a little sodbuster? Yes, sir. Uh, hey, Fibbs, come here. What's going on here, Fibbs? Inside, Marshal. Back there in the stall. Oh, what's back there? Bad, Marshal, real bad. Don't nobody go in there. It's real bad. What is? Who's in there, Fibbs? Not even you, Marshal. Not nobody. Leave him alone, I'm warning you. Oh, he ain't got good sense, Mr. Dillon. No, you stop him. It's, it's real bad in there. Yeah, something's got him scared half to death. I'm going to go take a look. You stay here, Chester. I'm going with you, Marshal. Look, Egan, I don't know what's in there. It could be a crazy man with a gun looking for blood. It could be anything. Action is what I came here for, Marshal, and you said I could hang around. All right. But you get out of the way if there's any shooting. I'm not entirely a novice with a gun, Marshal. No, but you're not a professional either. Now stay at least ten paces behind me. Right. You see anything? No. It's Marshal Dillon. Who's that here? Come on, speak up. Maybe he's hiding, waiting for you. Well, he can't see me any better than I can see him. You're taking an awful chance, Marshal. You stay where you are, Egan. What? Now, what's this? Yeah. Chester, bring a lantern. All right, Egan. What is it, Marshal? Nothing we have to kill. What do you mean? You'll see when Chester brings the light. Oh, he's coming. What have you found, Mr. Dillon? Hold the lantern over here, Chester. That's your work. Oh, my goodness. Somebody's gone and hung a man. So that's it. Oh, that poor devil. Was this a lynching, Marshal? No, Egan, that's old Tom Sanders. He's been drunk for 20 years. I guess he finally decided to break their habits. Uh, you won't get any action out of this. Well, uh, Egan, it's been nearly a week. Enough excitement for you? I must admit, Marshal, it's not... Quite what I'd expected. Somehow I had the idea Marshall was always busy doing things. You mean gunfighting? I've told you I don't think gunfighting is necessary. Yeah, I remember. Any man accustomed to command should be able to control these Dodge City ruffians without much trouble. I only draw my gun as a last resort, Egan. And besides, you haven't seen any of these men in action yet. I still want the job, Marshal. Yeah, I know. Oh, uh, Matt? Yeah, come on in, Doc. Say it, Matt, you'd better get over the Texas Trail. Oh? You know those fellas Gear and Bozeman? Yeah, I know them. Well, they've got that poor little Leonard Fibbs at the bar there, and they're trying to make him pay for their drinks. He's broke, of course, so they're beating him up. They're doing it real slowly, bit by bit. I tell you, it just makes you sick to watch it. All right, Doc. Wait, Marshal. Yeah, what? Let me handle this. Look, Egan, Gear and Bozeman may be a couple of bullies, but that doesn't mean they're not dangerous. They are. Are you afraid I might be able to handle them, Marshal? Well? Okay, go ahead. Here, take my badge. Tell him you're a deputy. Thank you, Marshal. You gotta learn one way or the other. <laughs> Are you listening to Gunsmoke in your favorite easy chair or 
Out driving? Oh, there you are. In the kitchen. Say, you want to make whatever you're doing more enjoyable? Have a Chesterfield. Enjoy Chesterfield's better taste and mildness. You see, Chesterfield packs more pleasure because it's more perfectly packed. A more perfectly packed cigarette gives you an open, easy draw that unlocks all the better taste and mildness of fine tobaccos. And Chesterfield, made by exclusive Accuray, is more perfectly packed, with an even distribution of tobacco from one end of your Chesterfield to the other. Firm and pleasing to the lips, mild yet deeply satisfying. Remember, to the touch, to the taste, Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. Buy Chesterfield. Mild, yet they satisfy the most. I knew you wouldn't leave Mr. Regan all alone. Nobody will look for us coming in the back door. And let's move a little closer. Egan's facing him, Mr. Dunn. Yeah. Oh, look at poor little Fib. They got him all bloody. What up. makes you think you can do this to a man? Is there no law where you come from? We come from Dodge, Mr. Deputy. Where do you come from? Are you Bozeman or Gear? I'm Bozeman, Mr. Deputy. I'm the one who generally does the talking, but we both do the fighting. You're out of order, Bozeman. What's that? I said you're out of order. I will not tolerate your insolence. I'm not sure, Mr. Deputy. But are you saying you don't like us? That's enough. You and Gear will turn and face the bar while I take your guns. You're the most doggone foolish man I ever saw, Mr. Deputy. Do as I say. Why? Because you're wearing a badge? That's reason enough. Now, Mr. Deputy... That may be reason enough There'll for you. There'll be no shooting. I'm ordering you to face the bar. I guess there's no use talking to you, Mr. Deputy. I'll take him along here. He's, he's going Hold to... it, Bozeman! <laughs> All right, that's enough. Well, go ahead, Bozeman. Try it again. Now, wait, Marshal. You knew he couldn't handle a gun. You know I can, is that it? Your gun against two of us? Quit talking, Bozeman. Don't try it, Gear. All right, then do as my deputy told you. Face the bar. Sure. Sure, Marshal. Chester. Yes, sir. You want me to lock him up, Mr. Dillon? Here are the guns, Chester. I'll be at Doc's. Maybe he can save Bozeman here from hanging. Yeah, it's getting light out, Doc. It generally does this time of morning. Yeah, but I'm not generally sitting up waiting for a man to die. He isn't going to die, Matt. I saw what that bullet did to him. You feel guilty, don't you, Matt? Wouldn't you, Doc? Yes, I guess I would. Doc? Oh, what? Well, he's conscious. Well, how do you feel, Egan? Pretty fair, Doc. I've been lying here listening to you talk. Well, you mean you've been conscious for some time? Half hour, maybe. I wanted to get my head clear. Well, a few weeks in bed and it'll be clear enough. I guess I was lucky. If that bullet had gone one inch to the left, you'd have died on the floor again. You were lucky, all right. <laughs> God protects fools and drunkards, isn't it? Marshal Dillon. Yeah. I heard you saying you felt guilty about this. It wasn't your fault. 
And I should have known what had happened. But I heard you telling Doc how it happened. You faced them the same way I did. They didn't shoot you. It's a little different with me, Egan. How? This is my profession. I've handled enough men to be professional. Egan, why do you think Bozeman did what I told him to do? Because he knew you'd shoot if he didn't? He not only knew I'd shoot, he knew I'd kill him. He knows I can handle a gun pretty well. In that part of the profession, they don't teach in the Army. It takes years and years to learn. Well, I can't complain anymore about there not being enough action, can I, Marshal? Yeah, your week's up today, Egan. Do you want the job? <laughs> Marshal, you ever been in California? Not for some time. I hear things are pretty active out there. I'll write you and tell you all about it. Our star, William Conrad. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. Chesterfield, made by exclusive Accuray, packs more pleasure because it's more perfectly packed. Unlocks all the pleasure of fine tobacco. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. Firm and pleasing to the lips, Chesterfield. Mild, yet they satisfy the most. You know, there were a lot of ways for death to come to a man on the frontier. All of them hard. But next week, a man meets death the hardest way of all. At the end of a rope. But that was the West. Good night. Gunsmoke. Produced and directed by Norman MacDonald. Stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Our story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Messman, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Sound patterns by Tom Hanley and Bill James. Featured in the cast were John Daner, James Nusser, and Harry Bartell. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Smokers, this is it. L and M Filters. So good to your taste, so quick on the draw. Make today your big red letter day, your L and M red letter day. Superior taste and filter, it's the miracle tip. Make today your big red letter day. Change to L and M today. L and M, mmm, so good to your taste. So quick on the draw. Get L and M today. Relax with L and M. So good to your taste, so quick on the draw. Join us again next week for another specially transcribed story on Gun Smoke. You've been listening to the OTR Gold Network. Find more classic radio at otrgold.com.